Shalom and blessings family, ABS here and I pray you're having a beautiful day. Now apparently over 200 Muslim men in Gaza have come to Christ overnight because of a dream they apparently had. Now this news is circulating all over social media and here's a clip just to give you the gist of the type of videos that are being made about this event and then we will dive into the actual source. Shocking news, over 200 plus Muslim men in the Gaza recently converted to Christianity. Praise the Lord. But that's not the craziest part. The very same night, every single one of them had a dream about Jesus. Keep praying for them because they are giving everything up to choose to follow Jesus. But following Jesus is the greatest choice that you can ever make. Do you follow Jesus? Let me know. And one more. You need to see this miracle that's happening in Palestine. Recently, news has come out of the predominantly Muslim community in the Gaza Strip that 200 men have converted to Christianity. They have reported that while they were sleeping, Jesus Christ himself appeared to them in a dream and they gave their life to Christ. Even in the midst of war, the kingdom of God is being advanced. If you know Jesus Christ still saves, put amen in the comments and subscribe for more. Now make sure you watch this video to the very end because I'm extremely skeptical about this situation and I'll explain to you why after we check out this source. It's very, very important for all Christians to know. Now the source says, Miracle, Muslim men in Gaza seek Christ after over 200 dream of Jesus on same night report. And it goes on to say, More than 200 Muslim men in Gaza have converted to Christianity after reportedly seeing Jesus in their dreams, said Christian professor Michael Lekona. Lekona teaches New Testament studies at Houston Christian University and has also written a number of books including The Case for the Resurrection of Jesus and Paul Meets Muhammad. In a recent Facebook post, which is this right here, Lacona said he received a report from underground Christian ministries in the Middle East that detailed the miraculous conversions. God is working in the midst of war, his post began. And here is the post. God is working in the midst of war. This news coming out of Palestine from underground Christian ministries. Over the past two days, we have ministered to hundreds of fathers who have lost most, if not all, of their children in the war. As we moved these men to safety, we fed them, washed their clothes, and began to read the Bible to them, sharing the way of peace through Jesus. Then a big miracle happened. Last night, Jesus appeared to more than 200 of them in their dream. Now, I'm not saying that this is something that did not happen, but we know that these people are going to be seeking asylum and safety from the war. We know that the Arab countries surrounding Palestine are rejecting the Palestinians. They do not want them in their country and they've even sent their military to their borders to prevent them from entering. This is how much the Arab nations do not want the Palestinians in their land. Why? If they are Muslims, why don't they accept them? Well, that's a topic for another day. And the love of the Most High Yahweh is only in those who are born again filled with the Holy Spirit and Muslims definitely are not born again and they are not filled with the Holy Spirit. They do not even believe in the true Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Anyways, let's keep going. Lekona then voiced his own stance on the Israel-Hamas conflict. I side with Israel in this war, not necessarily for theological reasons, but because Hamas and those backing it are pure evil, Lakona said. And I would definitely agree with that, that Hamas are pure evil. In fact, I have a video that I'm going to release soon, you are willing, that supports this information very, very deeply. But let's keep reading. Yet, I know that not all Palestinians support Hamas. In fact, they will be punished severely if even suspected of not supporting Hamas. That's a fact. Let's pray that this war can be over soon and that Israel can eradicate Hamas so the Palestinians can be free of Hamas. This isn't the first report of such dreams affecting Muslims. Now, there are definitely many Muslims all over the world who have repented of believing in their falsehood and have come to the true faith in Christ, in the one true living Elohim, Yahweh, not in their false pagan ideology where they circle around a black cube and kiss that black stone and think that black stone is going to come to life on judgment day and intercede for them and all of that insanity that they believe in. And apparently they can do a lot of other strange stuff, but let's not get into that. Anyways, about a month ago, about a month before the October the 7th Hamas terrorist attack, Assemblies of God News reported that Muslims around the world were dreaming of Jesus and converting to Christianity at an unprecedented rate. This is also true. I would even say it's the normal experience, said Dick Brogdon, a missionary for the Assemblies of God, a Pentecostal Christian organization. It would be accurate to say that Muslims are responding to Jesus in levels we have never seen, not in 1,400 years. 
Brogdon also noted the importance of dreams for evangelism. Dreams are contributing to revelation, the process of evangelism and conversions. So many Muslims reject Islam, but know that to follow Jesus will cost them everything. Now that's a fact. You may have seen the testimony of that Muslim who was watching my live stream on TikTok and he actually prayed to Yahweh to give him revelation about Christ and he passed out immediately and was shown that his entire family had actually been praying to Satan and not to the one true living Elohim and he came to Christ and he actually asked me to baptize him which was a very very awesome awesome experience so glory to the most high about that there are definitely Muslims who are getting real visions about the true Christ and repenting of their pagan ideology but we'll get to why I find this situation skeptical soon dreams of Jesus encouraged them along the way and give them the comfort that Jesus will be with them, though it costs them everything to follow him. Now, let me know in the comment section below if you believe that this really happened. I'm not saying that it's impossible, but this is the reason why I have a lot of suspicion. There is a technique in Islam called taqiyya, and David Wood explains it in great detail. Take a look at this video. Taqiyya is one of Islam's religiously acceptable forms of deception. It involves lying to protect yourself or to protect the Muslim community. Historically, taqiyya has been much more important for Shia Muslims than for Sunni Muslims because Shias have been in the minority much more frequently than Sunnis. And in order to protect themselves from being persecuted or slaughtered by Sunnis, Shias often had to deny that they're Shias. The prevalence of taqiyya among Shias living in Sunni areas has led many Sunnis to conclude that Shias invented taqiyya, despite the fact that taqiyya is found in the Quran. For instance, in chapter 16, verse 106 of the Quran, Allah says that his wrath abides on any Muslim who decides to reject Islam unless the Muslim is forced to reject Islam while inwardly remaining a true believer. The verse reads, Whoso disbelieveth in Allah after his belief, save him who is forced thereto and whose heart is still content with faith, but whoso findeth ease in disbelief, on them is wrath from Allah. Theirs will be an awful doom. This verse was supposedly revealed after Muhammad's companion, Amr bin Yasser, cursed Muhammad and praised pagan gods while being tortured. Since Amr only cursed Muhammad because he was being tortured, he was forgiven. So if you're a Muslim and you say, I reject Islam and you mean it, you're in trouble. But if you're a Muslim and you say, I reject Islam and you don't mean it, you're okay. Some Muslims insist that this is all there is to taqiyya. It's simply pretending to renounce your faith in order to protect your life. But taqiyya also involves pretending to be friendly towards non-Muslims, even though you hate them. In chapter 3, verse 28 of the Quran, we read, Let not the believers take disbelievers for their friends in preference to believers. Whoso doeth that hath no connection with Allah, unless it be that ye but guard yourselves against them, taking, as it were, security. Don't take unbelievers as friends unless it's to guard yourselves against them. Notice that this verse has nothing to do with pretending you're not a Muslim. It's about pretending to be friendly when you don't really want to be friendly. Let's read the most respected Muslim commentary in history on this verse. The tafsir of Ibn Kathir on chapter 3 verse 28 of the Quran. Allah prohibited his believing servants from becoming supporters of the disbelievers or to take them as comrades with whom they develop friendships rather than the believers. Allah warned against such behavior when he said, and whoever does that will never be helped by Allah in any way. Meaning, whoever commits this act that Allah has prohibited, then Allah will discard him. Allah will discard a Muslim who has a Jewish or Christian or pagan friend. But we've already seen that there is an exception. Ibn Kathir continues, Unless you indeed fear a danger from them, meaning except those believers who, in some areas or times, fear for their safety from the disbelievers. In this case, such believers are allowed to show friendship to the disbelievers outwardly, but never inwardly. For instance, Abu Khari reported that Abu Ad-Darda said, We smile in the face of some people, although our hearts curse them. Abu Khari said that Al-Hassan said, Taqiyya is allowed until the day of resurrection. Abu Ad-Darda, one of Muhammad's companions, said, we smile in the face of some people, although our hearts curse them. That's how Muhammad's companions understood taqiyya. Why would Muslims need to pretend to be friendly? Because the Quran commands Muslims, fight those who do not believe in Allah, chapter 9, verse 29. Fight those of the unbelievers who are near to you and let them find in you hardness, chapter 9, verse 123. 
Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, and those who are with him are severe against disbelievers and merciful among themselves. Chapter 48, verse 29. Muslims are commanded to violently subjugate non-Muslims, but sometimes Muslims aren't in a position to subjugate the unbelievers. What are they supposed to do then? Are they supposed to share their plans and say, we're not going to attack you now, but as soon as we get the chance, we're going to conquer your civilization, put your men to death, rape your wives, and enslave your children? Of course not. Countries wouldn't invite them in if they said that. So Allah commands them to pretend to be friendly, giving rise to the Islamic proverb, if you can't cut your enemy's hand, kiss it. Now, please don't misunderstand me when I explain what Islam teaches. When I tell you about Islam, I'm not telling you what your Muslim friends believe. So don't think that because Islam commands Muslims to violently subjugate unbelievers, but to pretend to be friendly when outnumbered, your Muslim friends must be lying to you when they say that Islam is a religion of peace. The average Muslim living in the West knows next to nothing about Islam and has been raised with the same values the rest of us were raised with. So when your Muslim friends tell you that Islam is peaceful, they probably believe it. Unfortunately, Islam isn't defined by peaceful westernized Muslims. Islam is defined by Allah and Muhammad, and Allah and Muhammad say, fight the unbelievers unless you can't fight them. And if you can't fight them, deceive them so that they're completely off guard when it's time to fight them. We saw this in the Quran, and we saw it in Islam's most respected commentary on the Quran, which included quotations from Bukhari, Islam's most respected collector of ahadith, and two of Muhammad's companions. So anyone who tells you that Islam doesn't promote this kind of deception either has no clue what he's talking about, or He's practicing taqiyya. So the deception is extremely deep and we know that Satan is the father of lies. We worship the one true living Elohim, Yahweh. We are born again, we are filled with his spirit because we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the son of Elohim, the word who became flesh, Elohim in the flesh, who died, his blood was shed and he rose on the third day. We are saved by grace through faith in him. Now this verse here, Acts 2, 17, has been quoted very frequently recently in support of what is taking place. Let's read it. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Now, nobody is debating this, but what we are saying is, be very careful who you believe truly is getting dreams and visions, and who maybe is practicing deceit for their own benefit. Let me know what you think about this entire situation in the comment section below, family. I love you so much. I pray the Most High Yahweh shines his face upon you always and gives you peace. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you do thumbs it up. Subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you haven't already done so. And share this video with your friends and family because the Most High does not will for any to perish. And you are saved purely by grace through faith. Sharing this video may bring somebody to Christ in your family or one of your friends maybe. So plant the seeds, water them, Spread the love of Christ and I'll see you on the next one. Shalom, shalom.